Hey, it's Cloud Yagami back with another scaling video, and this one is long overdue. I will be breaking down the full lore and scaling of Kiyotaka Ayano Kuji and fully contextualize all of his feats and his narrative in the verse. I will be breaking the video down into multiple parts so that everything is grouped together. Ayano Kuji, since the day of his birth, was born in the White Room. The White Room was established 20 years ago. It was founded and headed by Atsuomi Ayanakoji, the father of Kiyotaka, with the idea of creating a secret educational institution and not been disclosed to the public. It aims to raise a human by removing unnecessary things from their education with the goal of manufacturing geniuses with a two-lead the free world. The White Room began right from the first year of the first generation's life, with subsequent new generations being formed annually. Each generation is educated under different leaders and receives the corresponding education, after which it would then be evaluated and verified for which group had the most effective education. Hundreds of children have been trained under the White Room's education system. Children of different generations wouldn't have been able to see each other. Although they were in the same facility, they did not know the appearance and names of anyone else but themselves. All children in the White Room can grow to a certain level. However, trying to exceed that level has never been possible to begin with. According to Tsukishiro, the evidence can be found in that facility, which has been operating for nearly 20 years, and how not a single child has been able to reach the target except for Kiyotaka Ayanokoji, which only happened two years prior during the first year story. It's impossible for any white rumor, including Kiyotaka, to know where they go after leaving the facility. So far, most of the children raised in the White Room have their own problems, and so they cannot be put to good use like contributing to society outside that facility. While raised in the White Room, they are unable to live a normal life or grow up properly compared to every other students who are not from that facility normally would. Tsukishiro remarks that they will not able to last in the real-world environment as their hearts have already long since been damaged by the White Room. It was the goal of the White Room to have children be nurtured and raised with a complete education straight from birth. He stated that if this can be achieved successfully, Japan itself would experience growth, the likes of which the world has never seen before. Under the influence of various mysterious factors taken into consideration and used under the White Room, people's growth varies greatly. It is impossible to cultivate success by using the same method over and over again on everyone. Hence, why there are different generations of white rumors. The white room was able to produce tangible results for people outside Kiyotaka's generation. In this case, it was said that the fifth and sixth generation of white rumors are among those who happen to survive until the very end of their education, and there are some of them with the potential of producing great results. All that is left is to perfect the education system, and after doing so, the White Room may be considered an indispensable asset in the near future. Ichika Amasawa, from the generation after Kiyotaka, notes how the classrooms, corridors, assigned living chambers, and pretty much everything around them was a world full of pure whiteness. According to Kiyotaka, during a meeting between him and his father, he had said that the White Room was perhaps the most efficient place in the whole world to raise a human. However, not everything could be taught there as it was an institution that threw away anything unnecessary to the extremes. In volume 11.5 of the light novel, in a discussion between Kiyotaka and Tsukashiro, it has been stated that the White Room has had 19 generations of students in total, with each generation forming annually. Furthermore, the White Room is a special kind of facility whose ultimate goal is to raise all people unto equivalent superiority. It is a place where they seek to prove that the limits of humanity are decided not by one's own genetics, but by their environment in which one is raised in. In other words, they want their products to harbor and develop outstanding talent, not just those blessed with excellent genes like Ichika. Children who are at the age of 10 years old were taught systems theory based on Project 5. 
five. And by the age of 11, it was said that they also end up learning about the theory of relativity based on Project 7. The White Room students had a number of instructors who were described as the kind of people who don't take it easy on women and children. They were trained in knowledge, skills, and abilities in all sorts of areas over time. White Room teaches many different fields like the liberal arts, sciences, martial arts, self-defense techniques, and a myriad of worldly wisdom, all of which are at a professional level. Kiyotaka regards the White Room as a place where there was no gender bias in the children raised in that facility, since their pedagogy treated boys and girls equally. The meals provided within the White Room were controlled down to the most minute detail. It was basically impossible for the children growing up in that environment to be obese. There were periodical physical examinations in the White Room. They collected vastly more data than what a normal school's physical examinations would measure. In the White Room, there wasn't any rule expressly forbidding romance like there is for idols, but things that would allow a romance to successfully be established absolutely didn't exist there. Playtime, holidays, and things resembling those didn't exist there. Other than limited toilet breaks and bath times, they were constantly monitored. A romantic development was then thought to be something inconceivable due to the very nature of the facility being an antithesis of it. People raised from the White Room never fails to make preparations to defend themselves at all times in there. While the White Room is the most efficient place to raise a human, it does not teach the necessary social skills for everyday life as shown is Volume 8 during the mixed training camp. Students who failed the White Room were of no value to the higher-ups. If they were deemed worthless or unsuccessful, those White Room students would end up in the same place as their peers who were eliminated down the road. Kiyotaka had seen countless children excluding himself, suffering from the problem in the White Room, where they are unable to pour out their true feelings, believing it's a painful place for them to be in when there isn't anyone they can properly hold a talk with. There are a group of kids in that facility who eventually broke down and disappeared. They were described by Kiyotaka to be beyond the hopes of recovery. It is shown in the anime Kiyotaka as a young child, and other children were lined up before one of them mysteriously collapsed. The other children were worried, but he simply looks on unfazed and devoid of emotions, as if it was a natural occurrence. At some point in the past, a man who was later revealed to be his father appeared before him. He told his son that those who waste their talents are fools, which is probably the reason as to why he prefers to keep his talents hidden from others as to discard and rebel against that man's ideals. Sometime after that, Due to suffering from the arduous and plentiful trainings, a majority of the children dropped out leaving Kiyotaka as the only known remaining survivor. That led him to regard all humans as mere tools. For a student from the White Room, getting a perfect score on the entrance exam for enrolling in advanced nurturing high school wouldn't be difficult in the slightest. They'd be able to get an A or A-plus rating in academic ability with ease if they desired to. In other words, that meant that they'd be able to control their rating however they wanted within the OAA app. The fourth generation, also known as the demonic fourth generation, focus on pure individualism. Kiyotaka is from the demonic fourth generation, which had the hardest and most cruel course of all generations. Kiyotaka has also confidently stated that when it comes to the white room, he is the best student to have ever come out of it. As a result of his success, the faculty has been using Kiyotaka as the benchmark for future generation students, including telling them to exceed him, as their end goal. Kiyotaka's father firmly believes that his son is an existence that can become a perfect model and lead the masses. Kiyotaka was the result of his father's absolute pursue of an ideal he sought to realize and build. No one who had studied in the White Room didn't know the name that was Kiyotaka Ayanokoji. It was due to the undeniable fact that he was better than any student at any grade or age that his name was often brought up as a topic of comparison and reverence. None of the previous gens and after could surpass the last survivor of fourth generation. He alone had a huge impact on the entire White Room. It was said that no matter how extreme the training program is, he was 
able to leave behind a legacy of excellence surpassing all expectations. This is remarkable as, irrespective of how hard a genius white room student tried to show off one's worth, no matter how excellent their grades and abilities were, they were still not easily recognized by their instructors, other than receiving a few words of encouragement, to try and become someone who can surpass Kiyotaka. All they got were simple commands, telling them to catch up to him. It was an idea that had been painstakingly instilled within the minds of those who were raised in the white room. The instructors would strongly emphasize their words intentionally, looking to get the white room students to surpass their potential by fanning the sense of rivalry with their best, invoking and instilling the feeling of wanting to surpass Kiyotaka. For the fifth gen and beyond, some of those who studied there started to worship Kiyotaka, who had been made a god by them, viewing him to be someone unreachable and question whether such a person ever existed. Such white room children that idolize him had originally accepted education to become number one earlier than anyone else. However, they gave up on becoming number one themselves and were removed from the competition after realizing how impossible for them it was to overcome and beat Kiyotaka's results and accomplishments. Unlike the worshippers, there were others who instead began harboring immense feelings of jealousy and hatred when it comes to Kiyotaka as rivals and competitors. Those particular white room students don't welcome the fact that Kiyotaka was called a masterpiece and wishes to disprove it with their own hands. The goal of the white room wasn't to create people who could become number one. Rather, it was to establish the research that could allow for mass production of exceptional people equal to Kiyotaka himself. That was the real reason for the White Room's existence, as long as it is an example of a success story. It didn't really matter who it will be in the end, whether that person was Kiyotaka or another White Room student. Due to being trained under this excessive individualism, children were often crushed one after another until the last one remained standing strong. However, regardless of successes and failures, those with poor scores notwithstanding and those with perfect scores were allowed to move on. The fifth gen have more of a focus placed on communication and collaborations. All children were required to maintain a minimum level of interpersonal communication before being allowed to talk to one another. Only those raised in the white room with the same skills as this group of children could properly have a conversation with them without problem, but in the real world, it was said to be impossible by Tsukashiro. They also go through the same type of training as previous jins. There is a total of 10 different levels that the White Room teaches its students, and as they progress, the level raises. Level 5 or 6 are what is considered to limits of human development. Ayano Kuji is the only person from his generation to pass those level and reach level 10. After he completed the final level, he was then taught the beta curriculum. This curriculum is only specific to the fourth generation due to Kiyotaka's success with the first 10 levels. It is described as a curriculum that is incredibly hard and is in an entirely different dimension than his previous curriculums. This curriculum became the normal for Kiyotaka up until his escape to advanced nurturing high school. There is an ongoing narrative that Ayano Kuji knows every single martial arts, but nowhere has this ever been stated by anyone. He has canon statements for knowing karate, boxing, Jeet Kune Do, and Judo, and has been shown in the anime to use Aikido, kickboxing, Muay Thai, and MMA. There is over 180 plus different martial arts styles in total, and the White Room doesn't mainly focus on martial arts. It wasn't even integrated until Ayanokuji was four years old. The main focus of the White Room is mainly mental capacity such as academic and social intelligence to develop world leaders and politicians. Martial arts is only a subgenre of the White Room. When Ayanokuji was learning martial arts, he did not have any natural fighting talent and had to develop his skills with experience. His White Room fighting record at age four was 127 wins and four Four losses with 64 consecutive wins at the time the record was revealed. His four losses came from Shiro, who was a prodigy at judo. He would beat Ayano Juji once, then Ayano Kuji would quickly develop past him after gaining the experience and knowledge of how to win against him. This caused Shiro to lose confidence in himself and lead him to wanting to drop out on his own accord, leaving Ayano Kuji to be the last person from the fourth generation. After Shiro left, 
All focus was on Ayano Kuji. His martial arts training continued and intensified as he aged. When he reached age nine, he reached a level where he was only fighting adults in spars and winning easily, so Atsuomi wanted to take it to a new level. He hired a group of men to subdue his son in a serious fight. A lot of people think these men are professional martial artists, but Ayano Kuji described their movements as rough and spirited, and nothing like the fluid movements of the instructors he was used to. He also described them as opponents who were capable of irregular fights in an uphill battle rather than an even playing field. Also that unlike previously, pure physical strength was no match for them. The difference in muscle mass is obvious. They were the kind of guys that, in a head-on fight, you'd have no chance of winning 100 out of 100 times against, and they also brought a bag filled with different weapons such as stun guns, batons, and knives. That doesn't describe martial artists, but more of the Yakuza or gangsters. The instructors told Ayanokuji to fight them, as if he wanted to kill them. Out of pity, the leader of the group told Ayanokuji he could use one of the weapons even though he wanted to fight barehanded. So Ayanokuji used the baton for its reach. He noted that in order to win against these men, he had to attack their weak points. This, his attacks wouldn't do much damage. Ayanokuji essily beats men, and as the last man drops from a blow to his shin, Ayanokuji is about to hit him in the skull with the baton, which he says would have shattered it. After the fight, the instructor asks him, why did he go so far? Ayanokuji states he was tasked to kill them. Moments later, in a conversation with Atsuomi, the instructor stated the entire fight, Ayanokuji's heart rate remained normal the entire time, which he called a strength and weakness. He also went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tsukishiro and Shiba, who he stated are at agent level, and handled it well without taking any hits, dodging both of them while they were attacking him at the same time. After Fuka Kiryuin appeared, Ayanokuji easily beat Shiba in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Ayanokuji's martial arts training allows them to fight multiple opponents at once, as he fit this again against Ryuen and his underlings. In terms of his experience level, Ayanokuji is easily a black belt level. I would say he peaks at about fifth dan in the martial arts. He knows. I say this because during the fight with Horikita's brother, Esfater, she revealed than her brother Manabu. Horikita was a fifth Dan in Karate and 4th Dan in Aikido. Ayanokuji accessed to himself that if the fight had continued, it would have ended badly for him. Many people believe Ayanokuji to be a bad narrative when he says something that they deem is beneath him, when Ayanokuji carefully analyzes almost everything. This is one of the most controversial categories when discussing Ayanokuji with a lot of people misunderstanding how physically strong his attacks are or how durable he is. For starters, let's start with the elevator statement. Many people believe Ayanokuji can still destroy elevator doors after he himself stated it's impossible to break open. He did state... He could create a small hole for a person to fit through. But this statement is misinterpreted as an attack statement, when it really is a lifting strength statement. And even then, he said he only might be able to do it. The hole Ayanokuji is referring to is one he would make from physically pulling the doors open with his hands and holding it open for Ibuki to squeeze through. It wouldn't make sense for him to say it's impossible to break open, then say, right after he can break a hole. It's a direct contradiction. Physically pulling the doors apart is the only logical answer to his statement. Ayano Kuji even struggles against muscular opponents, shown when he used all his punching power when attacking Albert and only dealing shallow damage, and is even hurting his hand in the anime from punching him. If Ayano Kuji can't damage dense muscles, he can't destroy an elevator door. Ayanokuji's best AP feat is one-shotting Ichizaki during the rooftop fight and Nagumo in the forest during the year two island exam. Ayanokuji's durability is slightly lower than his attack potency. During the Manabu encounter, after dodging a kick from him, Ayanokuji accessed that Manabu could one-shot him if his kick landed flush. Manabu narratively scales to Nagumo, who I mentioned earlier. He said after tanked a punch from Albert, then he couldn't let him hit him anymore because the damage would be trouble for him. 
stated due to Horikita's athletic assessment, a blow to the head would kill him and would leave a permanent stain on his name if he were to be killed by a high school girl with a bottle stuck on her hand. Horikita is relative to Ibuki, is her rival, and Koji stated a kick from a trained martial artist, like Ibuki would give him a concussion if it landed. Ibuki also has the most notable feat in the verse when she dented the same broken-down old elevator she was stuck in with Ayana Kuji. He also had a similar assessment of Nanase's attacks after she shifted her personality to Eiichiro Matsuo mode. Ayano Kuji stated she had attacks strong enough to knock out grown men, which likely includes himself since Ayano Kuji would have the same durability as Tsukishiro, Shiba, or Tomonari Mashima, who Takuya Yagami knocked out and who was stated to have a superior physique, according to Suzune Horikita. Ayanakuji also that Shiba had the same attack power as himself and that Tsukishiro was the strongest opponent he ever faced, so he likely has the same power as well. Overall, most of the trained fighters, including Ayanokuji, have the same attack potency and durability levels. No one truly stands out besides Albert due to his size. The biggest advantages Ayanokuji have are his knowledge, experience, and skill level, which I mentioned before when debunking the elevator statement. It's not his physical strength that makes him superior. Another big controversial category for Ayanokuji is his speed. There has been a lot of misinformation surrounding how fast Ayanokuji is, and and today I will be breaking down all of the notable feats in the verse. Let's start with the best feat to date. Ayana Kuji dashing at Amasawa from 5 meters while she was off guard attempting to break Kushida's arm. Ayana Kuji pulled this feat off by using his leg strength to push off the ground faster than Amasawa could notice which should scale to around subsonic or faster than eye speed. This is also something Takuya Yagami also did to Ichika, so it's safe to assume Ayano Kuji and Yagami have the same speed. His other notable travel speed is the Manabu Horikita race. Ayano Kuji stated this was the first time he ever ran seriously outside of the white room and told Manabu to use his full strength, which means Ayano Kuji used his full speed as well. His running speed should be peak human. If you do the math on a 4 bar 1 track race and the time it took him and Manabu to finish the race, Ayanokuji has about the same travel speed as Usain Bolt, the fastest man alive. Ayanokuji's best speed attribute, however, would be his reaction time. Tsukishiro stated Ayanokuji had an abnormal reaction time, which is the only reason he or Shiba hadn't been able to kill him yet, even though they had been attacking simultaneously and have comparable attack speed to Ayanokuji. Kuji. This gives justification for superhuman to possibly subsonic reaction speed. After Raiwen was defeated and tasked with working in a group with Ayano Kuji and Katsuragi, he wanted to show to Katsuragi that Ayano Kuji has an abnormal reaction time, so he threw projectile orange juice at him to see if he would dodge it which he did with ease. However, Ayano Kuji has had times where he was caught off guards by opponents with similar speed. When Manabu attempted to kick him, he almost landed and missed by centimeters, which made Ayano Kuji cold sweat and say close call, and was already in defense mode, and Manabu was still almost successful without having any attack speed feats. Ayano Kuji had to stop his analysis of Nanase after she almost blitzed him after catching him off guard with her boosted speed. If he has to stop his analysis, analysis to use emergency evasive action that means he didn't see it coming until it was almost too late or blitzed. Overall, Ayana Kuji has superhuman combat and reaction speed with superhuman running speed and subsonic dash speed. Ayana Kuji's physical strength would likely be his third best attribute besides his intelligence and experience. Ayana Kuji has peak human, near superhuman strength, and it has showcased throughout the series. As I mentioned before about the elevator statement, this is likely what he was referring to rather than attacking the door with punches or kicks, since he Said it was impossible to destroy. Now I will calculate how much strength it would take to rip open an elevator door with brute strength. The lock is mainly composed of lock hook, lock block, force element, roller, open lock door wheel, electric safety, electric shock, and triangle lock. Talk hook and lock block constitute lock effect. The lock door shall not be opened, and the meshing depth shall be over 7 mm, and the endurance shall be over 1000 N. 
thousand n equates to the weight of a washing machine, which weigh at most 230 volatile bees or 104.32 kilo. When the students were doing physical tests, they did a grip strength exercise to determine the hand strength of the students. Ayana Kuji asked what the average strength of a high school student so he could manipulate his results to not stand out, but the person he asked gave the wrong number, and it resulted in him scoring a 60.667 kilo, which surprised the class. Ayana Kuji stated with training, a person can get their grip strength up to 100 kilo, which I assume his full grip strength is at. 100 kilo is still achievable in real life, so I wouldn't call this superhuman, but it's definitely at around the threshold of human capabilities, which is why I always say Ayana Kuji is peak human, not superhuman. In the Ryuan gang fight, he used his grip strength gain an advantage over Ichizaki by squeezing his fist after catching it when he threw a punch. This caused Ichizaki to scream in pain while on the ground. He also caught Albert fist after he attacked, which confirms Ayanokuji is the comparable strength-wise to Albert, which narratively makes more sense for the elevator feat, since Ayanokuji's punches had only shallow effect, but he had no problem matching Albert's strength. He did the same thing to Hausen, but in this instance, Hausen stabbed his palm, and Ayanokuji nonchalantly held his hand in place, with the knife still stuck through his hand. Ayanokuji stated that Hausen is superior to Albert in strength, and it's shown, because Hausen easily beat Ryuan and Albert needed help from Ichizaki to hold him down for Ryuan to gain his advantage. So this feat is even more impressive. In a match of tug-of-war Quenji and him ended in a stale mate tie, which is impressive for both characters. People assume Quenji has comparable strength to a boar because he captured or fought one in the island exams, but it was off-screened and there is too many scenarios to assume he used brute strength or punches when he could have laid a trap using his IQ and nature experience, since he said it didn't take him as long as he thought, and Kenji can also easily swing on trees like a monkey. Ayano Kuji, for the most part, likes to avoid fighting. He just wants to live a normal school life without confrontation. His main three fighting styles are karate, boxing, and jeet kune do. All of his strikes are calculated, and if the opponent has overwhelming durability like thick muscle mass, he attacks the weak points of the body. His catches his opponents off guard by manipulating their perception of his full strength, then quickly defeats them. He is an incredibly strategical and analytical fighter. Ayano Kui's approach to fighting is Raktori. He analyzes his opponent's fighting style the according to his experience will use the appropriate fighting style to match his opponent. The Tsukishiro fight was Ayana Kuji, using his full strength as he had to take evasive action multiple times to buy time for his analysis, which Tsukishiro pointed out. Although this means Ayano Kuji is not as unpredictable as assumed. He would need time to download info on his enemy before a fight, but it does mean if he finishes his analysis and has you figured out, he will beat you in a fight most of the time. Ayano Kuji's best attribute isn't his physical abilities, it's his mental capacity. His knowledge is said to be immeasurable and should be higher than any white room teacher who were experts in their fields. His knowledge is described to be higher than the amount which can be learned in a life team. He also remembers his surroundings and his own hands when he discovered them as a newborn. He stated he can tap into different memories throughout his entire lifetime and recall those moments with perfection and detail. Detail. He was able to make a better move than a chess engine on a machine developed by the Japanese government, with the best chess engines being able to play itself 30 million times in a second. Mentioned it himself that with proper analysis, he can visualize the future up till an extent. After his butler helped him escape the white room with only one option of not being tracked, which was enrolling into advanced nurturing high school, Ayano Kuji manipulated his entrance test scores to get all 50s. As mentioned before, white room students are so much more mentally advanced that they can manipulate specific scores on whatever test they please, and several characters have mentioned that he could have gotten perfect scores if he wanted, and even used formulas and reasoning far beyond the level of the exam, despite the exam being at a university level. He learned the OAA of all students in ANHS in a short time. This is a school full of Japan's brightest young minds. 
he has successfully manipulated several people to further his personal goals. That which has been described thus far is a mere fraction of his actual capabilities. For instance, Ayanokuji manipulated and planned out Ryuan's actions, thoughts, ideas, and strategies months in advance before ultimately defeating him and completely crushing Class C. He manipulated K. Karuizawa to get jumped by Shiho Manabe, and her group then using her bully incident to blackmail her and gain control of his class, using her popularity and social influence with the girls in her class. This, along with his partnership with Suzuna Horikita, has propelled his overall control of Class D. He manipulated an entire plan of making Sakayanagi target Ichinose with rumors, and rescued Ichinos from this situation to gain her trust allowing him to control her as a pawn without her even realizing it, resulting into Ichinose's Class B going down to the bottom ranking, which Ayanokuji later took advantage of by puppeteering a potential rebellion and manipulating the loyal Kanzaki to turn on Ichinose, which would allow him to enforce his ideology and create a puppet state within Class B. This was planned out a year in advance and was perfectly executed, and as a result, allowed him complete control over both Class B and Class D, while still remaining in the shadows, while the White Room forbid romance and education about love or romance. He will use a girl's personal feelings for him to achieve his goals. He has done this with Sakura, Keikaru Izawa, Sakayanagi, Nanase, Maya Sato, and now, currently, Ichinos. Ayano Koji, while initially thinking that Yagami could be a candidate for the White Room Enforcer, wonders and is doubtful that Yagami's interpersonal and social skills could really be a product of someone in the White Room, but later states he also states that he wouldn't want Yagami to be his opponent out of anyone in ANHS. But this was just another one of his deception feats. Y2V3, Y2V4 Yagamu attempted to set up bait to test Koji's deductive abilities when he pushed multiple second years, which also created a bait that Nanase, uh, by extension, Ryuen fell for. He wasn't pushing people off cliffs for no reason. It was to bait Koji to see who he was dealing with. But Ayano Kuji used it against him and used it to get him expelled, which shows how much smarter Ayano Kuji is than Takuya Yagami. My overall scale for Ayana Kuji would be street tier attack potency and durability with superhuman reaction, combat and travel speed with subsonic dash speed. A lot of people compare Ayana Kuji with characters like Mikey, but that is just a one-sided beat down that Ayana Kuji would lose 100% of the time. Mikey is superior in every physical category by miles and would destroy Ayana Kuji in a hand-to-hand -hand fight. I already made debunk video breaking down every detail of that fight. So if you are interested in learning why Mikey wins, you can click on the link in the description to watch it. Make sure you like this video, share and subscribe for more content. Also comment below other characters you wish for me to break down similar to how I did this one.